Welcome back to the Brahmin Word, and we are continuing on with the uh, Book of Ruth, but we're really going to start seeing a turn in this book when it comes to how do we see how do we see joy in the Christian life? And yes, there's a love story element to the book of Ruth, but I think there's a lot to do with joy as well. Well, the first chapter was kind of a look at the danger of bitterness, which you would think would not go with joy, right? Um, but now Naomi's life is about to turn. So go with me to Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth said, and Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she set out uh, and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. Now, this is really interesting, because in chapter 1, at the end of chapter 1, we see Naomi not wanting to be called Naomi, which means pleasantness or pleasant, but instead being called Mara, um, which means bitter. And yet, the very next chapter uh, in this book, in the very first verse of said chapter, we see Naomi being called Naomi. And so in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, okay, she just wanted to be called bitter, but now in the very next chapter, she's being called pleasant. Why is that? It's because it's looking forward to this meeting between Ruth and Boaz and the joy that that will start to bring to Naomi's life again. And so I think that's really interesting to see from just a textual standpoint. Uh, but you also see, too, um, the the uh, the connection between Boaz and Naomi, and it is from a familial standpoint um, with this uh, with Boaz being a relative of um, of Elimelech. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, why then, if that's the case, why then was she so despondent in chapter one over the fact that she didn't have any children um, to pass? Uh, uh, to marry uh, Ruth too, if she, if there was this this man named Boaz. Well, first off, it's because that there is a hierarchy when it comes to things like this, and so um, if um, if a if the husband dies in this in this culture, I'm not saying that this is how we should do it now. Uh, not at all. But in this culture, if if the husband dies, then the wife would be um, given in marriage to the next of kin. Now, if there wasn't any next of kin, then you would look for what is a uh, called a redeemer kinsman. We'll get to that later on. Uh, but that's kind of how it goes. And so it could be that that Naomi in her despair of losing her children and losing her husband just didn't really think about Boaz at all. Or there's an idea that maybe she just completely forgot about Boaz completely. Like she just, she didn't even know him, who he was. Uh, now I, we'll see if that makes sense later on. Uh, I, uh, me personally, I think she was just so caught up in her, in her despair of losing her children, that she just wasn't thinking about Boaz uh, as a redeemer kinsman. But we'll get to that later. So Ruth sets to the fields to help feed them, uh, and she goes to glean um, grain. So what that is, um, it's it's a tradition among the Israelites that they would allow um, some things to be left behind for poor the poor and foreigners in their country. Um, so this was not like a abnormal uh, happenstance. This is something that happened quite often. Um, but yeah, so she goes out to the field um, that belongs to Boaz. Um, who again in verse, at the end of verse 3 is connected to uh, the family of Naomi. So let's pick up in verse 4. Behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. So same city. 
And he said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She's the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came, and she has continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. So, we have this description of Ruth here, um, and the very first thing that is uh, done to describe her is that she's pagan. She is a Moabite woman, which, again, you would think would make people hostile towards her. and But Boaz is the exact opposite. Uh, now, I think for me, when it says in verse 7, it gives the response about what Ruth was doing there. I think that shows that, one, the widowhood of Naomi, but also of Ruth, right, because she is a widow as well, um, and so just the the very serious situation that these two women, Ruth and Naomi, are in, I think that's kind of what that shows. And thus, we get Boaz's reaction here. But you're also seeing, too, in, um, you're also seeing, too, in verse 4, just the camaraderie between Boaz and um, Boaz and his employees. So we're already starting to see that this is a man of high character, but he's also a man that is uh, that loves the Lord as well. Uh, as we see in verse 4, um, the Lord be with you and the Lord bless you. So I think that's really cool to see the character of Boaz immediately being shown. So let's pick up in verse 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not, glean, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not changed? Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young uh, men have drawn. Now, before we get to her response to um, what Boaz has said, let's talk about this. So what is he saying here in verses 8 and 9? A lot of people think that, or some, sorry, some people think that this is the beginning of the love story. Yes, kind of, but I think it's just Boaz looking out for somebody that's in a very dangerous situation. Because again, being a widow, especially being a young widow at this time, is a very dangerous point. Look at how Look at how he, he says this. Um, do not go in verse 8. So a very big uh, command there. Uh, again, not a command in like, but a very thoughtful command. Do not go. Uh, but then further on, but keep close to my young women. Uh, verse 9. Um, have I charged the not, have I not charged the young men not to, have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And so, and when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. You can see that Boaz, in the moment, isn't thinking about Ruth as a romantic possibility. He's thinking about her as a protection. Uh, he's thinking of her as a protective uh, human being. Like, he's just saying, okay, here's this young woman that I just found out is sort of in relationship with me because... I'm related by uh, through marriage to Naomi, and this is Naomi's daughter-in-law. So therefore, this is my relative, Elimelech. This is his daughter-in-law. And so therefore, I need protect her. So it's not necessarily this uh, romantic spark right away um, from Boaz. He's just looking out for her as a good, godly man should do. Uh, and so I think that's really important to see, and that's really cool to see there in verses 8 and 9. Verse 10, Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? Very true statement. Uh, again, foreigners, you would think, would not be... Uh, would not be looked at as well and would be in a very dangerous situation. And so this is a very honest question. But Boaz answered her in verse 11, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been completely told to me and how you left your father and mother in your native land and came to a people that you didn't know before. 
The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. So Boaz just, he understands the huge sacrifice that Ruth made for Naomi, how much love Ruth has for her mother-in-law. But then also he understands the Lord's working uh, in this situation with Ruth and Naomi in verse 12. Um, and so later on, verse 14, And at mealtime, Boaz said to Ruth, Come here and eat some bread and dip your morsel in the wine. So she sat beside the reapers, and he passed her her roasted grain. And she ate until she was satisfied, and she had some left over. When she arose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, saying, Let her glean among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. And also put, pull out some from the bundles for her and leave it for her to glean and do not rebuke her. So there's definitely some favoritism going on here. But again, I I don't think it's of romantic use yet. I'm more of a romantic background yet. I don't think that. I think it is a protective instinct on Boaz's part, but I think it's also familial as well uh, with Naomi. Um, and it's just, again, it's showing the character of Boaz and what a godly man should look like. I think that's what we're getting in chapter two, what a godly man should look like. Uh, but now we see how Naomi responds to everything that's happened in this one day. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she uh, beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an effa of barley. Um, an effa about... Um, about three foot fifths bushel, uh, some say maybe 20 to 22 liters. It's a lot, basically. It's a good amount of food. And so, uh, and which makes sense when, how uh, Naomi responds. Verse 18, and she took it up and went to the city. Her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. So the 20 to 22 liters. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied from the meal earlier on in the day. And her, and the mother-in-law and her mother-in-law Naomi said to her, Where did you glean today? And where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So just, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a correct statement. I mean, she, she'd be incredibly surprised by this because most of the time that doesn't happen. Uh, Glean doesn't usually bring in that much. But then two, she's a young widow and she's also a foreigner. None of this should happen to her. So uh, Ruth told her mother-in-law, with whom she had worked, and said, The man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. Now, we start to see the turn of Naomi's life and the the aspect of joy in the Christian life. Look at verse 20. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. What a turn from chapter one. We see the danger of bitterness in chapter one. This idea that she starts to blame the Lord for the um, for everything that had happened to her. But now she's thinking to herself, oh my goodness, there's hope. There's hope and there's joy here uh, when I thought that there was not. This statement here is beautiful. Look at this in verse 20 again. Um, look at this statement. I love this. May he be blessed by the Lord. Whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. That who's that um, that word there. That uh, That is not describing Boaz. That is describing the Lord. So the Lord who you would again in chapter one was the guy that that brought all these problems to Naomi's life is now the one that has not forsaken the living or the dead. I think this is an incredibly huge statement by Naomi. And this is huge for us in the Christian life too. When she's talking about the dead, yes, she could be talking about Limelech, uh, Malon, and Chilion, her two sons that passed. I think she is 
possibly referencing them in that uh, in that phrase, the dead. But I think, too, she's talking about herself. She thought she was gone. She was done. There was nothing left to live for in life. Um, it was just pointless. But now the Lord does not forsake those who are living and thriving but there's also the fact that the Lord does not forsake those who feel like they there's nowhere else to go. And I think that's incredibly beautiful to see in verse 20. Well, let's continue on verse 20. Naomi also said to her, the man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. So one of the question earlier that I asked, I don't think Ruth, I don't think Naomi completely forgot about Boaz entirely. I just think she was so swallowed up in the despair that she was feeling because of the loss of her loved ones that she just didn't think about Boaz. So I think that is kind of what we see there. Verse 21, And Ruth the Moabite said, Besides, he said to me, You shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. Uh, and Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, lest in, in another field you be assaulted. Which is sadly probably a very true statement, verse 22. Verse 23, So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. So you see this joy that starts to come back to uh, the life of Naomi, but you also see joy in the life of Ruth, too. The fact that she is just this woman that, in all honesty, should be on the outside and be fearing for wherever she walks, basically. Um, and yet she is now under the protection of a godly of a godly man, of a godly human being. And that is what an incredible thing to see uh, in the life in the, in the book of Ruth. Now, obviously, this does take a turn in chapter 3 when it comes to uh, the love story. It does get more into the love aspect in chapter 3. Uh, but I think it's interesting, though, in chapter 2, that it's not really about love. It's about joy, experiencing joy again in the life of Naomi and experiencing joy in the midst of what it means to be a godly human being in the life of Ruth, but also in the life of Boaz too. And uh, what a glorious, glorious passage this is. So uh, I will see you next week as we dive in uh, to more of the love story between Ruth and Boaz. Uh, but we continue on with seeing the joy of the Christian life as well. So I will see you next week. However, I'll see you with Brahmin Word tomorrow as well. Thanks.